So moving over, continuing the camping side of things. Stuff sack with the incredibly expensive but very light uh, MSR uh, Titan cook set, um, minus the lid. The lid I'm getting rid of in favour of a piece of cut down pot cosy material or windshield material if you buy it from Backpacking Light. Um, I haven't tried this out yet but I'm quite confident it's going to be fine with a bit of weight on top of it. Um, I've also cut out something to allow that in because the original lid is just circular so you can't put the lid on and lift it up at the same time or as I do I keep hold of it the whole time because we tend to cook inside the porch and I don't want it falling over so I have to keep hold of it and balance the lid on there. That weighs 10 grams I think the lid weighs 65 or something so reasonable saving there. A little spatula that we've not used yet but I think because we're going to be picking up food in French supermarkets and it could be any old food it's not going to be freeze-dried stuff in a bag we're probably going to have to be scraping stuff off the bottom of the pan and that weighs about 15 grams I think um, it's made by GSI who make an awful lot of those plastic spoons and knives and those screwed together wine glasses you might have seen that's a nice little thing the actual stove great little stove. Uh, that's the stove and that's the adapter for the French system. Um, the adapter weighs slightly more than the stove. It's about 75 grams, about 78 on my scales. Uh, I could have bought a French stove that would fit those French gas stoves, uh, gas canisters rather, but I didn't have time in essence. Uh, and I know this is a great stove and I know that the carbon monoxide output from this is a lot lower than a lot of stoves. There's some fantastic articles on backpackinglight.com that describe the carbon monoxide output from stoves, which isn't an issue if you never cook inside a tent, but the chances you never wanted to cook inside at least the vestibule of a tent are quite remote. So I'd always go for something with low mono carbon monoxide output. That lives in a little tiny outfit stuff sack just to keep the grit and bits and pieces out of the jet because you don't want to get that blocked. Uh, I light it with... Oh, normally there is a tiny little knife attached to this that I use the back of the knife to strike that. It's a Swedish fire steel, in fact it's the miniature fire steel that Ryan Jordan had commissioned from them and eventually they put into full production last year. Um, that sparks up the stove really nicely, but I do carry a lighter as well as I mentioned in the first video, just in case I need something else to spark it up with. Um, at the moment I've got a larger knife in the food that I'll show you in a minute. That lives in its own little tiny A-lock sack just to keep the water off it. Uh, standard titanium cook set, but oh, to get the stove out again. A little bit of silver foil. This is actually the casing from an Ustkaka, which is a traditional Swedish dessert from where Little Bjorn comes from in Sweden. Uh, fits over the gas stove nicely with a bit of a hole in the bottom of it. That goes on the opposite side to that. And the pot on top. It's got a big wide open area, lots of holes punched in the base because again you want lots of air in there to prevent carbon monoxide building up and to get a proper clean burn. Uh, if it's not got enough oxygen you won't be getting the full effect from the fuel so you're wasting it and also you're producing dangerous carbon monoxide. Um, this makes a huge difference. I found that even cooking a vestibule I can use about 50 grams of fuel to boil up a pan of water like that. Um, with this in place it goes down to about 18, 19 grams of fuel. Um, huge difference, massive. That can make many extra days out of a canister. And that's a good tip for the canisters. I kind of stopped carrying gas canisters because I, I can never quite tell how much was in them. But if you have some digital kitchen scales, put the canister on it, weigh it when you first get it, and then each time you've used it, weigh it again and right on the bottom how much it weighs. You can see how much you're using and you know how much you'll use for a, a given trip and you know if there's enough in there to cover it. 
the other couple of bits in here, there's a little tiny bottle from Backpacking Light in America of uh, washing out liquid. This is Ecova biodegradable stuff. Um, and a tiny bit of cut down sponge with some soft scourer, not the green stuff that just scratches everything. This is the white non-stick scourer. Um, just for cleaning up the pans. It uh, doesn't really matter so much on the pans. We tend to use it for the folding cups, which we use that uh, in the evening we'll use soup and in the morning we'll use tea. And having soup flavored tea becomes tiresome after a while. So I tend to wash them off for that. So that's the cooking covered, I believe. So that's the extra bits and pieces, really, that take us up, including the mats and up. Oh, of course, the sleeping bag. I mean, you need a sleeping bag, there is something in here. I showed you in the first video the um, duvet jacket in a sort of pancake shape in the bottom of the rucksack. And here it is again, with spare clothes. But this time, instead of just a duvet jacket, there's a sleeping bag in there as well. So that completes the whole set of things you'll need to go camping instead of just hut to hut. And it does compress very nicely in there. So yeah, that is the full complement of bits and pieces to go from hut to hut up to camping. Um, for the photography, 